30. And we'd like to welcome all of you tonight to Be Report of Education's March 18th, 2018 meeting this Thursday. Um, Mrs. Brucker, would you please call the roll? Ms. Arnold? Here. Ms. Hunt? Here. Mr. Morrison? Here. Ms. Rogano? Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. You have a forum. Please stand for the pledge. So many people here this evening. Um, that board, it's nice to see you this evening. Thanks for being here. And uh, tonight, I have the honor of uh, beginning what we do in the spring, and we get to honor um, retiring uh, employees. And our first retiring employee is um, our, one of our bus drivers, Ms. Connie Deaton Hill. Uh, Connie is retiring at the end of this month, and um, she has uh, had uh, 25 years as a regular bus driver for us and served two years as a substitute teacher. And at this time, I would like to invite Connie and our assistant supervisor for transportation, Ms. Sh Lindy Schumacher, to come on up here. And Connie, if you do me a favor and stand right here, we're gonna say some really nice things about you and embarrass you just oh, a little yeah. bit. Okay. <laughs> so Connie, tonight, as part of our recognition, um, we want to take a moment to publicly thank you for your service to Beaver Creek City Schools. And as um, when, the, when the board took adoption of your, uh, voted to approve your retirement um, resignation for the purpose of retirement, um, the following resolution uh, was part of what they adopted. And I'd like to read that resolution at this time. So at the Board of Education meeting held today, March 15, 2018, the following resolution is adopted. Whereas the Board of Edu the Beaver Creek Board of Education has received notification of the retirement of Connie Deaton Hill, and whereas the Board of Education wishes to publicly recognize and commend Ms. Connie Deaton Hill for her outstanding contribution during her 25 plus two years of dedicated service to Beaver Creek City Schools and community, and whereas through her efforts, the quality of support rendered to the district students, staff, and administration and the performance of the school's missions has been greatly enhanced. And whereas Ms. Deaton Hill leaves an outstanding professional and personal record which will serve as an exemplary model for all who follow. And whereas her presence, influence, and contribution have helped to make our schools a better place. Be it resolved that the Beaver Creek Board of Education does hereby accept with regret the retirement resignation, re resignation of Connie Deaton Hill and publicly expresses to you our sincere appreciation for her outstanding career in our schools, and we wish you health, happiness, and a long and active and content retirement. Thank you. Connie, Thank you. for you this evening, we have a copy of the resolution, a plaque commemorating your time with Beaver Creek City Schools, and in this envelope, you'll find an activity pass. We invite you to join Beaver Creek City Schools at any athletic or student event free of charge with your activity pass. Oh, that's nice. Thank and you. at this time, I'd like Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Shoemaker to say a few words as well. Good evening. Connie Deaton Hill has been an employee for Beaver Creek City Schools for 25 years. Wow, where did the time go? Connie, I've personally worked with you as a bus driver, as your trainer, as your dispatcher, and now as your assistant supervisor. It's been a pleasure to know you and work with you all these years. Thank you for your service and dedication to the Transportation Department and for con your continued support in getting the students of Beaver Creek safely to and from school each day. I wish you nothing but the best as you enjoy a new way of life called retirement. Remember, retirement is when you stop living at work and begin working at living. Connie, congratulations on your retirement and remember, the best is yet to come. Yeah, 
Of our next uh, presentation, I will turn over to Mrs. Rucker. It's my honor to be here again tonight on behalf of Otter State Dave Yost to present the Otter State Award with distinction to the Beaver Creek City School District. As I note every year, it's always important to note that this puts everyone in a very select group here. The Otter State's office audits approximately 5,900 entities and less than 3 to 5 percent are eligible for this award. So I always like to read through the criteria so everyone knows what it takes and what Penny and her group does to make it happen here. So the Otter State Award is presented to local governments and school districts upon completion of a financial audit that meet the following criteria of a clean audit report. They complete a, the first thing you have to do is complete a comprehensive annual financial report within six months of fiscal year end, have a clean audit with no findings for recovery, no material citations, no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies, no single audit findings or any question costs, have no other financial concerns. The management letter must contain no comments related to ethics referrals, question costs, lack of timely report submission, reconciliation issues, failure to obtain a timely single audit, findings for recoveries, or any public meetings or public records issues. As I always like to note, this represents the hard work of all the school employees here that strive each day for their accounting excellence. I want to recognize the Board of Education and the members here and the superintendent they have done an excellent job in accounting for all the dollars here in the district. But I specifically would like to recognize Penny Rucker. Again, I keep liking to say again, since this is my third time being here, since I've been doing this, for her commitment to fiscal integrity here in Beaver Creek. Congratulations, Penny. On behalf of Otter State, Dave Yost, I'd like to present the Otter State Award with distinction. Thank you. All right, thank you. It really just means I have a great staff. There's a letter from Otter. Thank you so much for coming out. Appreciate that. You are welcome. It's great to be here. Hopefully, we'll see you next year. So. I hope so. <laughs> Okay, and our third presentation uh, is our school spotlight. We actually are combining our two schools tonight. So we have Ankeny Middle School and Jacob Coy Middle School. And I'm gonna ask Mr. Rad if he would come to the podium at this time. Good evening, uh, my name is Dale Rad. I'm the principal at Ankeny Middle School. And I'm also here with Mr. Sean Kelly from Coy Middle School. And there we go. Uh, we're going to talk about one of our courses tonight. It's called Design Thinking. And Mrs. Erin Adele is also here, who's a wonderful educator. And she, I probably am not going to say a whole lot because what I have to say is about a tenth as interesting as what she will say and then what some of our students from both buildings will share. So at this time, I will turn it over to you, Mrs. Odell. Thank you so much for the opportunity to showcase um, our eighth grade students work in the design lab and also a wonderful partnership that was formed between um, Beaver Reef City Schools and World Digital Imaging. So for those of you that are not um, familiar with design thinking, design thinking is a creative, collaborative, problem-solving approach that helps people generate, embrace, and execute on bold ideas. Students tackle real-world problems, both locally and globally, and learn to define and respond to specific users' need, and then design solutions that are user-centered and prototype those um, ideas. A variety of tools and technologies are available in our middle school design labs to help design solutions come to life. And um, students use 21st century skills of visual, oral, and written communication to then present these um, design solutions for feedback. Um, graphic design seemed like the perfect pairing with um, design thinking um, as a unit in our semester uh, course. 
Graphic design can be defined as the art and practice of planning and projecting ideas and experiences with visual and textual um, content. So a real relationship there that led me to seek out the help of our um, local Beaver Creek business, World Digital Imaging. So I first got in um, contact with the owner, um, Craig Howick, and um, he introduced me to Danielle uh, Reinecke, who is their senior graphic designer. And thankfully, uh, they are committed to education and have donated uh, their time and talent to our schools. Um, so Danielle first visited the lab to teach the kids um, some of the technology that's available to them um, in the form of Adobe Illustrator. Um, and to follow up on their first project, a legacy project, students were challenged to design inspirational posters to leave their marks on the middle school design labs using Adobe Illustrator. So um, we had Danielle in for the day where she taught them the basics of graphic design and at the very tip of the iceberg with Adobe Illustrator. Um, these posters uh, serve as inspiration across the two middle schools, both in the labs and um, around um, our buildings. So a great uh, first lesson to teach that um, technology. So we have some of the kids in the audience with their posters, if you guys want to stand up, show them off, <laughs> just from where you're sitting, or come, feel free to come um, up front and show them off. So some really impressive work after just one um, visit from Danielle. Um, eighth graders, um, they learn something and then they take it even further. So we had a lot of fun um, and Danielle was a great partner in allowing us to continue to communicate with her as we needed help and um, prepared for printing. Um, a great use of our technology in the lab. Thanks guys. Yeah, let's let's show them off. <laughs> and then our um, students embarked on their next project titled Be Better, which was inspired by the philanthropy model of the stock company Bombas. Good job, guys. Um, Bombas, a purchase one, donate one business model, helps the homeless population by serving an under, um, overlooked need, excuse me. Students were invited to think of a problem or cause that they wanted to solve or support using the design thinking process to come up with innovative solutions. Students used the fundamentals of graphic design and entrepreneurship to help communicate, brand, and market their ideas. After studying many famous logos and learning the psychology of logo design, Danielle spent another day in the lab helping the students create their own logos for their businesses or organizations that they developed. So these are some of the logos that we developed. Hayden, would you like to come up and share um, a little bit about your logo? So me and a couple of other boys um, came up with the company and logo Stir. That is the Norwegian word for a bolster. We went with Norwegian. I personally asked for it because that's my heritage. I'm a, a Norwegian. But um, so we went with the yin yang because currently there is an imbalance. There are more like terrible shelters where like the dogs and the cats and other animals there don't get enough treatment. They don't get enough time to be outside and roam around and be actual animals. They get more put into carriages. Sorry. So um. What we set out to do was try to come up with a model for shelters to follow so that they could remodel themselves and then to make themselves better and easier to, to govern pretty much so that the dogs and the other animals could get plenty of free time and also be animals. And then Danielle was a, a great helper. She helped us curve the lettering. And then we needed a lot of help getting the lettering on the underneath side. She showed us how to wrap it around and then flip the text, actually. So, thank you, Danielle. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Ada. 
Really impressive. started to design for a homeless shelter and our logo was called Kafka because it stands for each of the members of our group and um, well while my group and I were designing our logo we needed a lot of help so Daniel was there to help us and we were very very lucky for that and um, it was really hard for us to figure out how to have the five visible under the scar. And the scar is a symbolism for like the terrible treatment that animals have to go through when they're in the shelter sometimes. And the five is for the five members that were in our group. And again, I really like to thank Danielle for helping us. Awesome logo. And their design solution was pretty innovative and cool too. Wish we had time to tell you more. Thanks, Vaughn. Do you want to speak about your logo? Uh, sure. Come on up. Come on about your project and your paper frogs. <laughs> so our group decided to work. Well, our logo is a paper frog, in which one of our friends made quite a bit, actually. <laughs> so we decided to take that motif and put it into our logo. So our group was, of course, the paper frogs. Danielle helped us a lot with the curving and actually getting the paper frog to go over the ring that it is jumping through. So thank you for that, Danielle. Mm -hmm. And that, she helped us a lot with our logo quite a bit. Turned out great. Thanks, Eric. And then um, to uh, communicate the entire scope of the project, the kids put together um, iMovies to um, share uh, the ex entire design thinking process and highlight how they used graphic design either for um, prototyping or mediums or um, their logo. So um, this first um, iMovie um, is uh, CC and her design team. CC, you want to wave? Anything you want to say about your iMovie before we play it? No. We'll just let the movie speak for themselves. Um, let's see if I can do this. I don't know if I can do it for my. Dayton was the third most segregated city of its size. I have many ideas concerning our prototype, such as school newspaper, anonymous blog, and bracelets, but we decided to go with posters because we thought they'd have the most influential impact. You are smart. You are beautiful. You are loved. You are wanted. You can do anything. You are unique, and you are you. Religion is an important part of who each and every person is. Why do you care why they believe in their faith? It comforts people in times of trouble, gives them faith, and carries their burdens away. If we're going to fight, let's fight for each other. If we're going to shout, let love be the crowd. Our business is accepting of others no matter who you are, where you are from, your sexual orientation, or your religion. You will be respected in our business, and we will serve you as best as humanly possible. We interviewed Preston. From what words, he said that he liked the colors and that the LGBTQ was better because it had more hashtags. From what could be changed, he said not to put green on brown because it was harder to read and to change it to a black font. From what new ideas were sparked, he also said to put the name of all the religions on the poster so it's clear to the, re to the reader. From what questions came up, he asked how would it work and how would people find the posters? Just, just, just. 
Our logo is beautifully united inside, two puzzle pieces connected. The beautiful united means that people are more beautiful together than they are apart. And the two puzzle pieces connected is that puzzle pieces may not seem to fit, but when you change your perspective, they per fit perfectly. What's next for Beautiful United is to hopefully make a, the Instagram account and get people to follow us and build a community of people who believe in uh, equality and we can get people to start using the posters in and around their businesses and homes. So a great message, Beautiful United. Um, having trouble advancing my slide now. Lainey and Emily are um, here to showcase their uh, project. Um, and do girls have anything to say before we just let it roll? Go for it. <laughs> Our next group um, included Zach and Madison, if you want to 
Wave, um, and they were uh, designing for um, um, understanding the importance of sleep. <laughs> We are Somnus. Somnus comes from the Greek god's name for sleep. Our team is made up of Eric, Gavin, Zach, Madison, and me, Logan. Our point of view is children all over the world need to get better sleep in order to do well in school and stay healthy. Our expression was a statistical fact that states chronic sleep loss contributes to higher rates of depression, suicidal ideation, and obesity. We are trying to give children more comfortable services to sleep on other than the people. Our mission as a future company is to create a functioning organization that can provide quality foam mats, blankets, and pillows to children all over the world and in our area so they get better sleep to do well in school and stay healthy. We also make Instagram for our Our first iteration, the low resolution prototype was little pieces of foam glued together. The feedback we received on this was not well because people could feel the glue in between the foam. Our next prototype is a bigger piece of foam covered in soft fabric that we received better feedback. People said it was comfortable and cozy and very soft and they would definitely prefer this over the floor. Some children are lucky enough to have beds. Those who don't have beds are thankful for carpet, pillows, and blankets. Some don't have a blanket either. But some don't have pillows. Some people sleep outside. Some of them are lucky enough to have blankets and pillows. While you need sleep, researchers have also shown that after sleep, you tend to retain information and perform better memory tasks. 37.4% of the world gets 7 or more hours of sleep. 31.4% of the world gets 5 or less hours of sleep. 31.3% of the world gets 6 hours of sleep. What is sleep? A condition of body and mind such as that which typically recurs for several hours every night in which the nervous system is relatively negative, the eyes close, the postural muscles relax, and consciousness practically suspended. Sephora, one of our ways you can support our causes by following Sonics on Sephora.com on Instagram. You can also donate new bedding such as blankets and pillows to local organizations. Thank you. And this um, last group features Scotty and Ken and um, their teammates who were designing for the very popular need of a better way to transport your belongings and store them in class.
We also designed the optimal drawstring bag. Sometimes strings snap or put pressure on the user's shoulders, so we have thicker, more durable strings that won't break, and foam shoulder pads with bubble wrap on the back for added comfort. There's also foam in the bottom for extra strength and durability. Our feedback was very positive. Our interviewees liked the durability and the hook. They said that we could cut a hole in the back of the bag to hang it easier, which we did, or add a cut holder. The hook should be able to expand and collapse so that you could easily take it off your desk and it could tighten or loosen so it could fit any size desk. For our future, Poyo bags will continue to improve their bags. To do this, we can fulfill our test feedback needs by making the hook adjustable for different sizes of tables and make the bag more comfortable and secure. And then um, making those uh, um, come to life using the tools and technology available um, to us uh, because of partnerships with organizations and businesses in our community. Um, just today, uh, the semester students were visited by um, Mr. Tyler Downing and his uh, carpentry um, students who are in their um, construction technology uh, courses. So we learned the basics of carpentry today, thanks to their visit. And then um, Jesse Anderson from Needle, Ink, and Thread has been in the lab um, each semester to uh, teach our students um, how to use the sewing machine so that if the, those um, skills are ever needed to develop prototypes, um, they're there. But we really can't thank um, World Digital Imaging and Danielle enough for their support of our students and um, teaching them uh, all of the stuff that's possible with graphic design and the tools and technologies that we're fortunate enough to have in our labs. So I'd just like to close by giving um, Danielle a moment to speak. So thank you, my name is Danielle. Um, I work at Royal Visual Imaging. I worked there for about nine years. Um, the company's been uh, established over 20 years ago. So I've had the privilege to come into the class and teach them about basic skills in Illustrator. It's um, just even with those uh, two days that I was able to come into class, I was impressed with the amount of knowledge that the kids absorbed and took in and was able to create. Um, with their logos as well as their um, their posters, I was I was super excited to get the email from Aaron. The next couple of days, and the posters were printed, and it was just I was wowed by their capabilities and their strengths that they took um, with just only learning, as um, Aaron said, the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with these programs. I work with this program about 90% of the time, um, so just to see what they did was amazing. And 
So I thank you for letting me come in in your class and enjoying the time with the students. Thank you. series of slides and I'll explain to you the process that we use about three stages to strategic planning. The first stage is establishing the participation which your leadership team and cabinet have been working on and meaning we met with 12 strategic focus uh, groups today to gather information about 120 people and uh, there's also a strategic planning team that we work meeting two Saturdays in April. So this part has been accomplished. When they meet in April, they're going to be working on the following things. They'll establish a purpose and frame a plan and look, review your beliefs and values, your mission statement, your vision statement. So when they, they do this, if they need any revision, they'll do that if they're uh, still valid and, and useful for the district, they'll adopt them. 
that led to form the plan through an environmental scan. A lot of what we were doing today was building data for this environmental scan. We were talking with and meeting with staff, asking the same four questions we asked before the board dinner this evening. What strengths of the district, weaknesses, opportunities, and challenges. In addition to that, data on the district financial data, discipline data, test score data, data on competitions, and both academic and athletic, uh, lots and lots of data on the district are being put together right now, uh, both by our group and by your uh, members of the cabinet. And that information will be shared with this group that's going to be meeting two days in, two Saturdays in April. Uh, it will help look at how, how we're doing, you know, where we are now, and where do we want to go, those questions will be asked. And then they'll determine whether to continue actions, the transition into new things, or to look at where, what new directions the, the district could be working on. Stage two is the writing stage. In this stage, uh, we look at you know, what you want to achieve. This is where you start writing goals, establish performance measures. We think that's an important part, just not having goals. But how are you as a board going to know if those goals are being achieved? And there needs to be agreement and written, written <coughs> procedures or written criteria put into the plan of what, what will you look for to establish the performance measures and it will show you whether progress is being made. We'll look for the data sources and establish those. This will be that team. Once that's done, we'll begin to decide how they'll achieve that. What are the strategies that are going to be used? <coughs> and then develop action plans. And finally, there will be a draft of the plan that will, will be a first draft that you'll get a chance to see. The administrative leadership team will work on that uh, and, and get that done. This is sort of an example of some of the action plans. You look at the actions right here, they're numbered. The beginning in 2015, here's the goal, community engagement. The beginning in 2015 uh, will increase family and community outreach, engage with both internally and with external stakeholders. How they're going to do this, strengthen family and participation in schools, the actions determined, and you can see there are four actions listed here. Data points are, are discussed. Persons responsible, that's an important key in here, to assign responsibilities for each action. So you know who in the district is responsible for accomplishing that. The resources that are needed and the timeline they're expected to meet. Now here at the bottom, you'll see performance measures. These are the things that you would use to establish whether in fact these things are happening to the level you want them to have. So this is one example. I think there's another page in here. All right, we just, we wanted to um, be able to show you what an end product could look like because it's a very long process. And the BCSD isn't you, it's another school district we work with, but um, this is um, just one format. But what's important here, as John pointed out, is just what we recommend is the different components in your strategic plan. Because from the very beginning, and what we believe too, which is why we feel like we're a good match to work with you and your district, is we believe that this, this, this phase we're in right now, the staging and the actual gathering data and talking to folks in your district, and then working with the strategic planning committee to actually um, formulate some recommended goals is important. But what's more important is that it doesn't become a beautiful piece of paper sitting on a shelf. What's really important, and, and it's important that we heard from Paul and the rest of your administrators is, that's just the beginning. What's most important is when we get that plan written, how are we gonna implement it? How are we gonna develop a culture of strategic thought and action? So these parts and pieces in the Fitch plan are important to build the capacity to do that. Um, and it, it is really, really just the beginning of the process for you. Once you get the plan written, you're off and running. Um, for improvement. So we just wanted to show you the end in mind, what a finished product could look like. Generally, a strategic plan includes three to five goals based on what your strategic planning committee identifies and the needs of your district. Underneath each of those goals, there's generally one to five strategies with performance measures. How do I know? How do we know that we're making the progress that we said we were going to? Um, and then each, under each of those strategies, we have action plans, which we showed you, and those are the things that are highlighted <coughs> under those. So again, it's, it's always good to know what product you're going to come out with as you begin to implement Right here, this is an important plan. point we'd like to make. We've seen districts try to stretch that, go to six. It just starts to overwhelm the resources and the capacity of the district. 
we're not we're not at all shy about seeing the success of the See, we, we realize this is a very successful business, but we think that this makes sense. And it's our recommendation that you would stick to about three to five because you start to buy off more of that, then the things just don't happen the way you want them to happen. Better off to put something off to the second strategic plan and attack three to five important things, really critical things for this district. But by the way, you're going to be doing normal work all the time you're doing these things, either additional things that the district and the staff are going to be taking on that send you in a strategic direction. The regular operational things are going to continue to happen every day. So it's not like people aren't going to be doing full day's work every day. They are. You're just going to be asking them to task themselves and do some additional things to take in a new strategic direction. Your community is going to help establish that. Your staff's going to help. We've even got students I've been identified for participating in this. Finally, the formalizing. This is where you work on communicating and institutionalizing the plan. One of the things I learned, and it's not a big mystery, but it was to me when I was working superintendent. I, I did things that district I leave and I look back and they were all gone. And this happened to me twice. Finally, when I got to Delaware, I, I thought, you know, that wasn't anybody's responsibility of mine. This wasn't anybody's job except mine. And the job was to institutionalize the things that were working. So when we identified things in Delaware that worked, we started putting them in the teacher's contract, the classified staff contract, put them into the forms, we wrote them into policies, in the administrative guidelines. We built them into the fabric of the district. And it's worked very well because I've been retired now 15 years and the things that were put in place when we worked on this all those years ago are still guiding the district, not because of I'm in it, but because the board put them in policy and said these are important to us. They built them into the fabric of the district. And when you do that, it, it makes it really, really important. Everybody realizes if that's in policy, we've got to do that. That's how you all speak is through policy. And so this is one of the things we think worked. Yeah, I think that was yeah. just a repeat of what we've done. Um, this, this, this is part of the environmental scan. It shows all the different aspects and areas of the district that yeah. are being looked at. Systems approach to strategic planning. Um, we're going to we back, back, back up one more. Right? Okay. This is the slide I told you to watch for. The level of involvement. You can ask people to be involved by keeping them informed. You can ask people to be involved by consulting with them. You can ask people to be involved by involving them in the work. You can ask people to be involved by collaborating with them. And finally, you can ask people to be involved by empowering them to help make the decision. And all of those are legitimate ways of being involved. Some people would prefer just keep me informed. Some people say, well, I'd like to consult with you on this, but I don't have time to devote lots of time to my work for this. Some people say, well, I'd like to be a little involved in this. Those are the people who fill out surveys, just focus groups. And in collaboration, those are the 41 people have been identified to come help put this together. And then the, the, finally, the, the group that's the, the strategic planning council is the one with the power to make the final decisions. So that's that's how this is to be set up. But it's legitimate ways of involving people and, and to hold on to this and then meet meet each of the things, the promises you made each of those groups. This will make a difference to how they feel about the plan and their willingness to implement and work hard to make it happen. Thank you. Um, we just kind of want to talk about your process to date. This is kind of how the, the participation process is structured. Um, we have Strategic Planning Council, which is your administrative cabinet and two of your board members. Um, their responsibility um, They've, they've been very instrumental in getting ready here to start a strategic planning process. Um, they've handled identification of stakeholders, meetings, times, locations, supplies, everything. They've been amazing to work with one of the best districts we've ever worked with so far. Um, their role is to help stage the strategic planning process, but participate in the strategic planning council. Once your strategic plan is written, that strategic planning council is responsible to ensure the implementation of your strategic plan. Again, you as a district can further define or change those roles, but generally, that's how people structure it. We come back after the strategic planning committee, and I think right at this point there's 41 people, all diverse from diverse areas of the district. Um, we've got parents, we've got community members, teachers, custodians, other classified staff, board members, students, administrators. 
Those 41 um, people are going to come together for two eight-hour days in April. Um, their role is, I've got another slide that shows the different things that they're going to do, so we're going to go into that. Outside of that, it was really important for your district, we were told to involve as many stakeholders as possible in the process. And the little chart that John showed you before, not everybody, it's not realistic for every single person in the community to be involved as the circles get smaller, but there are really effective ways that you can inform your strategic planning in your district. As an example, um, the invitations were sent out to uh, parents and guardians, community members, students and staff to take a brief survey. The, J the JTEC group sent it, at, sent it out. Um, this survey asked very specific questions about school climate, finances, academics. It was like a you know, multiple choice. And then there was a place for you to write in what you believe the strengths and the weaknesses of, of the city school is. Um, so far, the, as of this morning, we had over 700 responses to that survey. And high school students were, I think we're going to give the opportunity today and tomorrow, selected high school students to take that survey. Um, John and I are going to take all that data. That's a way for district and community to participate in strategic planning. The second way today was 120 people who were invited to focus groups from all of the community, parents, boosters, teachers, secretaries, custodians, administrators. John and I and two of our colleagues are here all day today asking them, what do you believe the strengths, weaknesses, uh, opportunities, and challenges for, this, for the Beaver Creek City Schools is? We've got a lot of data. I'm going to take all that data. I'm going to organize it. I'm going to theme it. You know, I'm going to say, does this comment pertain to academics? Does this comment pertain to finances? We're going to roll all this data together for the strategic planning to, committee to consider as they try to identify four, four goal areas or improvement areas for your district. So that's an example of how we're involving stakeholders throughout the whole Beaver Creek community in different ways, which will inform what goes into your strategic work. How many surveys were sent out? Um, well, we invited about 10,000 people between all of those groups to take the survey. And our response rate was, it will be close to 1,000. Actually, believe it or not, that's a really good response rate for a community survey. Um, and again, two of those questions were write-ins. And my guess is right now, out of the 700 responses, 600 people wrote responses, or there are 600 written responses on the strengths and the weaknesses of the schools, which I'll go through and code. We're going to put that all into a big report and give it to the, to the district and the committee to consider. So I think that's a, a really nice um, response rate participation in your process. When the committee meets in April, they're going to revise or develop five to eight district belief statements. Um, they're going to um, revise or develop a new mission statement and a vision statement because those three components will frame how you think and act strategically. It'll, it'll act as a guide for you to say, here is where our school district is right now. Here's what we do good and we want to do better. And here are some things that we'd like to add and excel in. So those things will help guide you through that process. Again, they'll take a look at all the data that we, we're going to provide them and then they'll identify three to five organizational goals. That's about 16 hours worth of work for your committee. Um, it, it's, it's, it's good work though. It's very satisfying work. Once that process is over, I believe that the um, steering committee has um, decided that they're going to utilize smaller district teams in different goal areas to actually write your, your basic strategic plan like we showed you. The strategic plan will actually include the actual plan. A lot of times districts choose to write about your process, include some of the data publicly that was used to consider your goals, um, thank your committee members and all who participated to this sort of a front piece of that strategic plan too. And I think um, uh, that's the, the, the points that I wanted to share. John, is there anything else that? No. Is there any, any questions, questions or comments or anything you have for us? Just a pleasure to work with your district today. It's just a pleasure, parents, teachers, everybody. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Thank you.
uh, what the job description should look like because there's no um, position out there. It's been a subsecretary that's been working out there. Um, the duties are more similar to a building office assistant, which we do have a job description for that. But um, building office assistant is more specific to building functions and a lot of student driven pieces there. So back and forth on what does it look like in a department situation. Um, it would be a 10 month position, 221 days. Um, there has been an MOU signed between us and DCEA on it. Um, as we looked at this position, um, we compared our, our Beaver Creek staffing and the transportation department to other comparable districts. Um, and this would be in line to have this position in there for the similar size district. Um, is this a cost increase? It is, but it would be minimal. Um, I don't want to say that it wouldn't because it would be, there would be some additional cost. Um, we have already been paying for the labor because we've had a sub out there for the entire time. There would be a slight increase in the rate of pay. Um, and we have already been paying into SERS. So those would not really be increases. The increase would come through the benefits package, um, the insurance, and depending on what uh, the selected individual chose for their insurance package, it could um, be as high as a $22,000 addition, because the family package is $22,000 for the insurance. Um, we are working in the transportation department on adjustments to make this cost neutral or as cost neutral as we can. So what kind of reductions do we make to help cover the cost of this? Um, so the uh, asking for approval for, to add this position at next month's meeting, there's no action to be requested tonight. So with that, any questions or comments? This will take effect next year. Uh, not necessarily. We could, we'd like to do it as soon as we can. The person's, the person's been out there. And for the nine years, this has been a daily, someone has said the Correct. daily. Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, next item. Um, and the next two items, I uh, won't be coming back next month to ask for any action. They're just updates. Um, bed bug guidelines and protocol. Uh, <clears throat> just wanted to give you an update with what we've been doing. So with increased incidents within the district, I wanted to, to share. Um, <coughs> Beaver Creek Schools has had guidelines in the past, but nothing was ever written down. So um, <coughs> we've written some protocols down for staff to follow. Um, I've worked with Ms. Fiore um, to put these guidelines together. We also referenced best practices through the EPA, through the Central Ohio Bed Bug Task Force, and also uh, other districts in the area, what are they doing? Um, so we put together a document that spells out our guidelines and how staff should handle things. Um, if there was a bed bug found or suspected bed bug found in a classroom or a building, there's a, a set of things that staff would do. If we have a suspected bed bug on a child, clothing or any of their belongings, there is um, guidelines for what staff should do. And then there's um, a set of guidelines for what administration and the facilities department will do in those situations. Um, one of the first things that we would do would confirm that it is actually a bed bug. Um, we would work with our pest control company to develop the right plan. And by the right plan, I mean, it could, depending on the situation, it could be handled differently. Um, was it a, a one-off where it came in on a backpack and we saw it once and we never saw anything again? That would be handled differently than if it consistently comes in and maybe there's an infestation. So it would work very closely with our pest control company as they are the experts. Um, it may or may not include spraying. If we were to do any spraying in the building, it would occur after hours. Um, we would work with our custodial department to make adjustments with vacuuming, increase the frequency, and make sure that we uh, dispose the bag properly if there were any in there. Um, we have templates for letters to parents. Um, there would be a letter if a student brought a bed bug in. Um, there would be a letter that would go home to their parents so they knew that it occurred. Um, there's also a template to send to the entire classroom where that student would be. Um, 
if there was a need. So depending on if again if it's a one off and we just have one come in, there's no reason necessarily to um, notify the whole classroom. But if it comes in on a consistent basis or we have we find multiple in there, then we would we would do that. So we can work through those pieces. Um, also if it's a continued problem we would assist the family to help find additional resources to help them deal with the situation at their home um, and, and if necessary notify the county board of health. Um, there are also additional resources listed in here that we would share with our staff and with the families that request a review. Uh, any questions or comments on that? I'm going to jump in. I would just like to commend Mr. Thompson and Mrs. Fiore, Mrs. Fiore for the time they put into this. Uh, they've spent an inordinate amount of time trying to come up with something that uh, we can put out to our staff and administration. So I want to commend both them for their work on this. That's true. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, my last item this evening for me, uh, lead testing in our drinking water. Um, this has not been a practice at Beaver Creek City Schools and not been a practice at a lot of school systems. Um, and it's not required by any governing organization for us to do that. Um, recent concerns and questions about it nationwide has prompted us to change our practice. Um, so we have done it. We worked with Pace Analytical, um, and they are a Dayton area test site um, to collect samples at all buildings and test. Um, Pace Analytical, again, is a registered and approved lab specific for lead testing. Not all labs are, are registered to do lead testing. Uh, we, we did samples at drinking fountains and kitchen sinks, um, and happy to report that all samples were below the EPA recommended threshold of 20 parts per billion. Um, we will continue a program where we test every year just to stay ahead of it. Um, we are going to focus on drinking fountains and kitchen sinks. We are going to focus on buildings that were built or the plumbing is prior to 1990. Any building earlier than 1990 is more likely to have lead in um, fittings, pipes, solder, etc. Um, we will not test every fixture every year. We will focus on those that um, will give us the most, best value for the buck and cover ourselves, I guess. Um, and then if we do run across any issue where we are above that 20 part per billion threshold, we will address it as soon as we find out about it. Any questions or comments on that? Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Takes our kids and teachers. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Thank you. So what, what would be uh, possible remediation issues? Um, um, if you have thought about what happens if we go over the it, it would depend on where, we, if it's a drinking fountain, depending on where you find it in the drinking fountain, it could be replacing the drinking fountain, it could be replacing the joint. We can, once, say we find uh, a location in the building where it's high, we'll do additional testing in the area to see if we can isolate it and then address it. So we'll talk about the issues of lead paint. Um, we have lead, I, I guess what's the um, do, you test, do you test for lead? lead? If, if we are doing renovations where we would be disturbing the lead. just don't. Yeah, so if, if we've got flaking paint, we just don't go in and start scraping it. Um, we, would, we would test it to make sure okay. that it doesn't have lead. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know, with all the renovations we did to the schools, I would think the lead paint wouldn't be an issue anymore, but I don't know. There's always a lead. I mean, there's always something, yeah. yeah. Depending on yeah. when it was last painted, it could have. Right. And I may remember all the classrooms being all repainted. But I mean, when I was there, when they did all the renovations, they were part of the uh, air conditioning system. All the classrooms were stripped, painted. So I was just wondering if there could be other places now. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item for board discussion, we'd just like to share with the board. It's on page 22A of your uh, board book. This is a resolution opposing House Bill 512. House Bill 512 is really the governor's approach of dismantling um, the Ohio Department of Education and really creating a new pre-K to college uh, program. 
one of the things that you'll note through the resolution is um, there was no discussion. This was really an idea that I believe he came up with. No discussion with boards, superintendents, teachers, principals, state reps. State reps. It was just something. And uh, in all our organizations, there's a very large movement to move forward and oppose this bill, which, in my opinion, we should be opposing it. So it, again, takes more control out of the hands of our Board of Education, which we need more control in, the five, in your hands uh, than what we currently have. So I would be asked, I'd be bringing this back next month. Uh, and there is supporting documentation in the left side of your folder um, that you'll be able to review uh, to get any additional information if you need any. But, but once you read the resolution, it's pretty self-explanatory.
coming out from that, I think it's an actionable thing is that uh, we can take uh, take away from that and that uh, giving that type of information to the community, I think, help uh, ease some fears that that, that were there. Uh, secondly, um, on uh, March 14th, I have to make it over to the high school to see the uh, uh, students in action. And uh, of course, it really took two parts. And one, one was a walkout, and it was handled uh, incredibly tastefully. And I just wrote a, uh, several adjectives down here that uh, uh, listening to the students speak, uh, seeing them on the football field, and I don't know if you've, you know, if you've seen the designs that they made on, uh, on the football field, the heart and BHS, uh, that um, for me it was incredibly touching. It had a, a huge element of sincerity. Uh, it's important, it's impactful, and uh, just thankful to the thoughtful leadership of uh, their school team that put that, helped put that together for all the schools. I didn't get an opportunity or uh, even to talk to kids from the other schools to see how it went. So I'm really interested in knowing that at some point. Uh, all to, also to Mr. Karras and his team. Uh, for working through that that situation, which could have could have been it easily gotten out of hand, uh, as well uh, a um, situation in the school. Well, no, I shouldn't say situation; it's probably a bad word. But uh, in the school, inside the school, kids that did not go out. Uh, it was even more touching to see uh, witness the 17 minutes of silence uh, around the table where they had displayed pictures of the kids who had uh, died at Parkland. And uh, you know, just listening to the news uh, and all the social media on this and the, all the varying opinions on whether students should have an opportunity to do these kinds of things. I just really defy anyone uh, to question a real compassion demonstrated by the high school students. And I think it's a really important uh, point at that level in their life that they get to witness and work with that type of engage, social engagement uh, that can lead to change in our culture. Um, lastly, uh, Green County Career Center uh, moving along. Uh, lots of new programs, picked up a whole bunch of new students this year, and um, they're all excited. They're going to also put a levy on the ballot uh, for building a project. Uh, we're going to be doing a um, Project Take Flight. They're going to be working with uh, starting an aircraft mechanic uh, program at Green County uh, Airport. So lots of cool things happening. I think they pick up about 40 students this year or last year, which is which is a big deal. It is a big deal. So that's all I have to say. That was a lot. So we love it. Thank you. This is time. Um, just want to congratulate the winter sports team. Um, a lot who qualified for uh, much higher level competition up, in, up to including state, as well as show choir recently got grand champion. I think at several competitions, in their last competition. Um, I see that Mark Brown and Matt Hickey are here. I just want to say thank you to them. Um, not only a board member and a parent, but you know when things like Parkland happen um, in other districts. I mean, those things can happen anywhere, but I just want to tell you that for me as a parent, as well as being on the board, I take great comfort knowing that you guys have really um, spent a lot of time investing in our kids and our district and uh, being as prepared as we could possibly be should anything like that ever you know, happen in our area. So I just want to thank you for all you guys do every day in our community and in our schools. Um, and then I also wanted just to say, our, one of our neighbors in Greene County, Bellbrook, uh, their girls basketball team is playing in the Final Four tomorrow, so good luck to them. It's pretty exciting that one of our hometown teams is going to be competing. Thank you. Mr. Morrison. I agree uh, completely. Um, we did have, uh, several weeks ago, we did have our athletic council meeting. At that time, we did recognize, as Mrs. Hunt just said, our varsity sports and our winter season was a phenomenal season. Our boys basketball have defeated uh, uh, Franklin, seven-time defending SWBL champs. 
uh, girls basketball team was GWAC East champs. Uh, boys bowling was sectional champs in both girls and boys advanced to the districts. A gymnastics team finished third at the districts. A hockey team was the division champs. Swim team we qualified nine uh, athletes for the state championship. And in wrestling we were sectional champs. Nine qualified for the districts and we had the first girl in the state of Ohio history to win uh, the sectionals at the division one level. So all those are phenomenal. Uh, we did have an update on uh, some GWAC changes that will be coming, uh, taking place either a year or two years from now. We're not sure which yet. Uh, we did discuss middle school athletics, uh, possibly making some changes there, um, doing some things differently. Um, we talked about uh, our athletic website and some things that are going on to improve that. Some good things happening there. And then, of course, we talked about the athletic department overpay and fee schedule, which was bringing those people up to where they should have been. So, uh, very, very uh, interesting and exciting meeting. Also, like to wish uh, everyone happy Easter. Um, Jeff, you mentioned that you have some new to the public. I thought the public had some really interesting and valid questions for us. And it's nice to know that we have you on our team because I feel our kids are safe with all of you. I don't have any kids in the school system, but all the kids in Beaver Creek are my kids. That's how I look at it. So they're all my kids. So thank you so much for what you do for us. Um, I also want to wish everybody a happy Easter if you're traveling, have safe travels. You're staying here. Enjoy your Easter break. And um, that's it. We're going to go to executive session. So I need a motion is second to take us into executive session. And there will be no action taken following the executive session. But um, for the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, security arrangements, um, policy 12122G6. Demotion or compensation of public employees, policy 12122G1. Your motion is second. So moved.